This is how I turned a $300 hoopty into a show car in just nine days. Today I'm installing a $5,000 car on a $300 pile of parts. I'm honestly a bit overwhelmed with options, but this ugly dented door needs to go. So I try to pick up the new one, but definitely safer to do it with the help of a friend since the glass is extended. So I'm deciding to do the exhaust since it has to go on the floor of the diffuser. And the wheels look too good to not toss on with it. An exhaust is one of the best bang for the buck mods you can do to a car. And this M3 exhaust sounds decent, but we can definitely do better. I'm removing the flange bolts and almost dropped the exhaust to my head, but thankfully remembered to grab my safety bucket. Won't be needing this exhaust valve anymore. I removed the two buckle hangers and it falls out, but now I'm wondering if this active Auto Works exhaust is actually worth $1,000 over stock. It's made of fancy stainless steel, removes these restrictors, and should help my car breathe better with a pipe that's consistently about 6 millimeters larger than stock. It's also supposed to save 15 to 20 pounds, but really it's just telling me I need to get back in the gym. So I swap the exhaust hangers and reverse the removal process and immediately snap my exhaust gasket. But thankfully I ordered a new one a year ago. It sounds decent now, but we need to finish the build to hear it out in the wild. Day two of installing a $5,000 car on a $300 pile of parts. With the new exhaust on, I'm deciding to swap the trunk lid so this full carbon spoiler can go on ASAP. But what's wrong with the old one? Both sides of the trunk latch have been absolutely demolished, so I cut out the whole rear of the car and welded in a new one. I'm also finding a bunch of weird dents, wiring, and screw holes that makes me think this was an undercover cop car at some point. So I'm disassembling everything, starting with the license plate, the tag lights, and the latch brace that every E36 absolutely needs. I'm about to remove the whole lock actuator, but then I realized I can just pop these two pins out, remove two 10 millimeters, and now I'm sure my key will work on the new trunk. So I'm removing the plugs to the trunk close sensor and the actuator, pulling the whole harness out of the lid, loosening the hinge bolts, and convincing my dad to come help with the promise that there will be less car parts in the garage than there are on the car itself. It's looking good, but I'm still having to swap the new trunk's harness for our existing one. Oh, and I'm wondering what the chances we got a full toolkit. Uh, well, yeah. Thankfully, our old trunk has most of them to swap over. So I'm repeating the process and you're enjoying the view of my uh, video skills. So I'm super nervous for a final test fit, but this turned out even better than I could have imagined. I still need to fine tune, but now I can test fit the K2 diffuser and the wing. So stay tuned for day three of putting a $5,000 car. I'm finally fixing the crustiest part of this build. The new doors are awkward and heavy, so I enlisted the help of my shop dog and my homie Jake. growling at him like literally like an hour ago. You're so, good. so we're learning as we go, but a car door typically has two hinges, a door check, and an electrical connection. I'm removing the bolt and pull tab for the plug, pushing the door check pin in, and hammering it out. I'm giving Jake full permission to not worry about my paint, but I know I'm gonna regret not putting tape on it down the line. So I did that to the fender before unbolting the hinges, and now we're lifting the door off the car. Is this how Jeep owners feel? The new one's missing a bunch of parts, but thankfully I can swap them over from the old door. So we're lining the new door up on the frame. Lila's inspecting our work for fitment. And with the green light, I'm lock tightening the hinge bolts and reinstalling everything. So the car is already looking completely different than it did two days ago, but now we can install our first exterior mod. These M3 mirrors were my first experience painting exterior parts, but they turned out great. So I'm popping the inner mirror cover off with the trim tool, unplugging them and removing the three bolts. So I'm pulling the old one off and the new one's going right back in its place. I'm making sure to tighten the bolt slowly to seat the rubber seal, but I can't forget the mirrors. So I plug them back in and carefully press them until they click back into place. Everything's really coming together, so stay tuned for day four. We're making great progress, but it's finally time to drop the Angry Birds pig look of this front end. I'm removing the cowl, trying to figure out how these headlights melted, then removing the bumpers so the pig snout is finally coming out. But now I'm realizing how dilapidated this radiator fan would look behind our shiny new front end. Some people swear by the sun, so it's the perfect opportunity to test it out. I'm planning on doing a video comparing peanut butter to other trim products, but honestly, it might not be worth it at this point. Do we need peanut butter? It actually looks phenomenal. Unlike this nose panel, which I use to pull my car out of a mudslide. Yeah, I mean, full cool send. But the new one needs some work too. So I'm grabbing my Amazon body repair kit, leaf edge pliers, and the blind sense of overconfidence it's going to take to make this look decent with zero experience. But honestly, it's the wins like this that make doing stuff yourself feel worth it. So I'm reinstalling the nose panel and snapping in the new grills. I'm struggling to squeeze the larger Euro style headlights in, but I'm making it work. So we can add our clear corner lights, and I'm finally testing out all the lights to make sure they work and finally seeing my vision come to life. These look great, but I'm planning on doing some videos on upgrading to LED light bulbs in the future. But I'm feeling my heart rate increase every time I get a new part installed on this build. We already know what we have to do next, so stay tuned for parts on the car. It's time for the M bumper and Turner Motorsports adjustable race split. But first, I'm pulling the crash bar from the old bumper and building out the new one with its grill, new fog lights, and hello there, and brake ducts. So I'm test fitting everything and it's looking phenomenal, but then I realized a huge problem. This gap right here. This is keeping our skid plate and splitter from lining up perfectly with the front bumper. So I'm pulling it back off only to find a bent bumper mount. Thankfully, my friend had one laying around, so now it's day six. The Turner skid plate is chassis mounted with aluminum brackets. So I'm drilling out these existing holes, painting them to avoid rust, and I'm super excited 
decided to put my new rib nut tool to use. I'm popping the insert into the hole, squeezing the tool, and now I can turn any thin metal into a threaded mount. But now I'm installing the skid plate onto the brackets, so I can mount and install the plastic rib nuts into the bumper. These were too long for the dowel on my new tool, but I was able to create a custom one with parts from my leftover bolt for. I'm installing the splitter bracket so I can enjoy the most satisfying plastic feel of my entire life. I'm bolting the splitter up with the included spacer, but now I've got a really tough decision to make. Would you run this fully extended or tough? Either way, Turner Motorsports killed it with this design and I can't wait to install some of their other custom parts. Day seven, installing our pilot parts. Our new front splitter looks awesome, but we need something to balance it out in the rear. So I'm putting together this diffuser from K2 Industries. I'm a little scared to drill holes in my car, but after mocking it up, I've got to see this through to the end. It came with all the hardware, but I'm using my rivet gun to speed the process up. There are nine dedicated holes to drill for the bumper and two that go into the trunk, but I can utilize the others for additional strength. I'm about to start drilling, but I noticed my exhaust is really close to melting my stock mounting point. So I'm using some aluminum tape as a temporary fix. I'm lining everything up, placing a spacer on the center hole and drilling our first pilot so I could widen it to install a rib nut. I'm also learning not to overset rib nuts into plastic. But now I'm repeating the process for the other four rear bolts, making sure everything stays lined up. And I'm getting the side straight drill so I can mark four spots in my trunk with a paint pin and a punch and full send it with the drill. It was sketchy at first, but turned out to be pretty fun. So I'm painting the holes, bolting down the hardware, and taking full advantage of the adjustments to dial in our fitment perfectly. This thing is solid and adds that subtle aggression that I think will work perfectly with the front splitter and carbon wing. Can't wait to do some legit aerodynamic testing on this build. We're getting really close to the finish line, so stay tuned for the Day eight, installing a car. I've never done this before, but a four piece full carbon lightweight style wing sounds like a terrible part to mess up. So I'm grabbing strips of paper and masking tape because I only get one chance to drill holes in the trunk that line up perfectly with the wing's base. I'm flipping the base over and lightly taping the strips so I can poke them open, flip the base over, light it up perfectly, and I'm using my body weight to flex the base into its final position while my mom tapes down the strips to the car. We're gently peeling the tape off the base, and now I have the perfect template to punch and drill pilot holes into my trunk lid. But one of the holes is flat out missing. So I'm using my hole saw and aluminum oxide Dremel bit to open up the inner skin of the trunk so the hardware sits flush and a wrench will actually fit. I'm filming the trunk lid right next to me touching up all the bare metal I just exposed with paint. It's not pretty, but I'm still not sure if these holes will even line up with the spoiler in the first place. So I'm doing my best to assemble the spoiler with double-sided tape and some longer bolts I found. But when I'm test fitting it, I'm super surprised to find all the bolt holes are lining up perfectly. So I'm tightening it down in a cross pattern and I'm pretty happy with how everything's turning out for my first attempt. I didn't account for the bend of the base on the right riser, but you'd never notice it unless I pointed it out. Stay tuned for the finishing touches so we can finally pull this thing out of the garage. Yeah. Day nine, installing a 5,000 and a 300 at the door, front bumper, splitter, rear diffuser, and wing installed, but now it's time for the little things. So I'm pulling the old amber side markers out and swapping in some new crispy clear ones. I'm also needing new amber bulbs for my corner lights, but I hate the egg yolk effect you get in a clear housing. So I found the perfect solution in these chrome amber bulbs. When they're off, they have a clean bluish tint, but they light up the perfect yellowish color. I've been waiting forever for this, so I'm ripping off the old trim. So I'm cleaning off the sides of the car to install my freshly ceramic coated M trim. But first I'm installing my custom 3D printed BMW Motorsports badge. Everything's basically snapping into place with some new hardware so I can move on to the M3 side skirts. The clips and rivets are popping right off with the plastic trim tool and the new one's going right back in its place. I'm thinking of all the other things we still have to do like painting the roof trim, seam sealing the trunk, and cutting the GT corners. But I need to see what this thing's looking like out on the street. I'm amazed at how much this car has transformed since we first started working on it nine days ago. And I can confidently say we now have a 300 dollars car with five thousand dollars worth of parts but we're just getting started so stay tuned for more i can't wait to drive this thing with the new transmission shifter sway bars and some crazy stuff in the future